Welcome to the Engineering Influence Podcast from American Council of Engineering Companies coming to you from the 2024 Fall Conference in New Orleans, programming brought to you by Bentley. And very pleased this morning to be joined by our morning keynote speaker on AI, responsible AI, uh, Didam Unatesh. Really, if you're talking about AI, your name pops up uh, as one of the people who were at the beginning, really, with OpenAI, with uh, uh, Copilot, Microsoft Copilot. You've been with uh, Goldman Sachs, Schneider Electric, Microsoft, um, so many of these companies that were at the beginning of working on this. And, and of course, now you have your own firm that you're working in London. Yes. Um, uh, Lotus AI. Yes. <laughs> and um, really, just I, you know, this is an issue which we're not the only industry, of course, that is undergoing this transformation. But engineering, it seems, every year we we went from two years ago, where it started as a kernel of conversation, something that we realized we had to get ahead of. Now we have a tech committee, and now we have all these activities with AI. Uh, it's amazing how this technology has come such a long way in a short period of time. Um, you, you, you spoke about the fact that the question that you always receive at, at, at the beginning was, was when is AI going to hit that point of surpassing human intelligence? And you noted that it's going to sooner than we think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, where do you see, I mean, how would you characterize the growth of this technology in such a short period? So I think, um, first of all, this was cooking for yeah. <laughs> for a long time. I mean, maybe not all of us are mm -hmm. familiar with the journey, but it has been it has started 50, 55 years ago. Yeah. But I think the actual acceleration for business enterprise, mm -hmm. like these commercial uses, I do think I actually started about 10, 12 yeah. years ago. So I, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have been very lucky, very privileged to be part of that journey almost mm -hmm. from day one, from a yeah. business AI perspective with Microsoft Research. Um, so how... It has evolved so fast. It's like the typical answers are cloud, data, mm -hmm. computing, right? You, you, we, we're all, as engineers, we are familiar with, with the ingredients yeah. that accelerated this cooking. But I do think the, the actual ignition <laughs> you know, is November 2022, 20, of course, with ChatGPT, yes. where uh, people really, things became real at mm -hmm. consumer level. Mm -hmm. Uh, how much impact, how yeah. much it can change our lives. So I think that was a, definitely a huge, huge tipping point. I, you, you did a very good job of kind of setting the table with the kind of a lexicon of terms to kind of focus the conversation. Of course, agency, yes. agents. Yes. You know, that, yeah, and that's really when ChatGPT as a public consumable agent of AI yes, exactly. really came on. But there's so many other agents that are being developed. And you made a very good point about firms taking the advantage right now of designing their own agents and that yeah. you know I, I we spoke to it we spoke to a student yesterday who was a, a geotechnical engineering student and um she's about to graduate next year yeah. and what struck me is that she, she hers is the first generation coming out of college that will have a better understanding of exactly and, and a comfort level of using agents yeah. compared to my generation <laughs> or anyone else's generation yes uh, yeah, how do how do firms balance that? You have a, we have a we have a, the next generation of engineers coming in are going to be more willing to play around or use agents, and you made a point that with the way that AI is going to create efficiencies and automation, thirty percent of work could be automated. That you're going to have these individuals who are actually their coworkers could potentially be AI agents. Yep. Um, you know, in your consulting work, working with firms, how is that received? How how do firms, how are firms answering that call, of saying how do we deal with the transition of workforce if we're going to have people plus these proprietary agents that they're going to be working with? Great question, and I think it's just the I what I you asked about my observation, yeah. and I I will just share that very sincerely, candidly. 
uh, I see human nature literally reflected in different organizations. Mm. Some are wanting to hide their head yeah. under the carpet mm -hmm. and just, you know, yeah. uh, try to, you know, you know I, I, you know, play the three monkeys, if yeah. I may say so. Others are completely jumping on it and yeah. and experimenting, making the most of the mm -hmm. business opportunity, and not internally or externally. So yeah. that we, I do see the full spectrum. I have mm -hmm. to say, and even in October 2024. I do get the question, is this hype? Is this real? And yeah. I, I have to say, I get goosebumps when I hear that question. But then I also remind myself, not everybody spent a decade in companies like Microsoft, mm -hmm. where everything is just fluent, yes. right? You know, you, you're expected to try, you're expected to experiment and fail. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I think the answer to your question, and I do work with young people a lot, mm -hmm. uh, because it, it's super fulfilling and yeah. energizing. <laughs> um, I, I, I think there are two interesting factors at play. This is just my limited experience, mm -hmm. but I see the impact of the pandemic, yeah. uh, negative impact on communication mm -hmm. skills. So I, I have, I mean, you could have data scientists that should be snatched yeah. in today's environment that are not being hired mm -hmm. because they lack the communication skills, mm -hmm. whether it's business communication or just landing a message. Yeah. So it's a bit heartbreaking to experience the impact of pandemic on this generation and, and the huge demand on mm -hmm. AI and data science skills, not really playing out as yeah. obviously as we would expect. Um, the other thing is, um, yes, some companies are uh, hiring or trying to hire young people that are comfortable with these skills, but the, shall we say, elder or more seasoned um, experts complementation is must. Yes. Because yes. that wisdom, that mm -hmm. experience with the world, the human connection mm -hmm. with clients or, you know, it, it, that is quite shocking in my observation. Yeah. So I'm still learning, I'm observing mm -hmm. how this will play out. Yeah. I mean, that's what Raj brought up. I mean, yes. the fact that leaders, uh, there are leaders in the industry who are more forward looking and are, are early adopters who say, okay, technology, great, let's see what we can do with it. And then there are others who are very hesitant to say that, you know, no, it has to be proven. There yes. has to be iterative. It has to be, can't, it can't be version one. Risk averse, right? yes. And it's very <laughs> risk averse. And it's, it's balancing that. And it's, it's you know, I, I think the barrier to entry with a lot of the agents that are out there. A small firm can take advantage of AI just as much as a larger firm. Yeah. It's a question of scale, of course, and yeah. how much resource you put behind it. But then it's just the willingness of leadership to actually embrace this and make it a core piece of their business. Absolutely. You know, and, Absolutely. and you know, how, how do you think, um, in your experience, the engineering industry is kind of poised in comparison to some other industries I see. Very um, yeah. in, in, in adopting these technologies? That's a fantastic question, um, and I think it depends on which industries the mm -hmm. engineering teams or businesses are yeah. aligned to. It, 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 again, huge spectrum. Mm -hmm. Some are completely on it, making the most of it and flying with it. For instance, yeah. um, there is a company who asked their employees to build GPTs mm -hmm. with whatever repetitive annoying tasks they basically yeah. encouraged their employees uh -huh. and they came up with 700 or 800 GPTs of their own could be anything from expenses to drug discovery yeah. and uh, that's one extreme a mm -hmm. positive example and 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 the, the, the opposite end is also true so I, I think um, leadership vision and uh, compassion with failure, mm -hmm. compassion with experimentation yeah. is huge and it, it, we have to make sure we are ahead of the industry that we are serving mm -hmm. as engineers. Mm -hmm. That really yeah. is the key thing. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. I just shared eight mm -hmm. examples. They can yeah. be true of any industry mm -hmm. that we serve. We just need to do the homework to say, okay, yeah. I can help you with this. Be willing to take that step and adopt it and see what happens yes. and be accepting of failure. Yes. And, and not and not worry that everything has to work out. And, because you know. it's a journey. I mean, if yeah. we are ex even if some things may look like a failure at mm -hmm. certain point, it's actually learning yeah. to accelerate mm -hmm. much better than not starting, yeah, which is definitely not good for survival. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and you, you raised really good points about responsible AI. It's that 
how you know the, the, one of the things that I think is is you mean and you alluded to this is that the environmental impacts of AI because of the of the, the computing power that it requires. Yeah. Um, I mean, you look at I, I you know you look at SpaceX and and and, and, and you know Musk put together I think it was like a hundred thousand high-end GPUs in a data center and they said oh you can't do that and he did it but then you look at that and you say my god that is a energy consuming monster yes um I was thinking about this when you were talking about uh the the environmental impact and sustainability it's not just uh, AI for sustainability but you think there are opportunities out there for the engineering industry to kind of innovate ways where you can actually reduce the impact Absolutely. the physical impact of hardware on 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 like the data centers and such like that. Absolutely, yeah. and there are so many things. I did I, I did almost an uh, engagement, mini engagement on this uh, a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and again there are maybe eight to ten very proven, very impactful mm -hmm. use cases. For instance, one thing is to e improve the efficiency of data yeah. centers. Mm -hmm. I I mentioned I'm on the board of this Tiny ML Foundation, mm -hmm. which is all about that because yeah. Tiny ML means it consumes less energy. Yeah. It's much more sustainable and it's much kinder on the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we choose the right models, right, let, let's say, size of the models, yeah. we are already being kinder to the environment, for mm -hmm. example. Other things are about optimizing the energy gr grid. Mm -hmm. like th there are so many, so many uh, areas that we can actually use AI yeah. to help with yes. the problem. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting how the technology not only transforms the way that we actually interact with those systems, but then how it actually transforms the physical design exactly. of those systems where these large data centers might actually in the future, maybe 50, 70 years from now, be able to be significantly also, yes, shrunk. Yes, yeah, yes. And, and hopefully we're able to get to that point where it's, it's, it's self-sustaining. Um, you know, it, there, there's so... I, there, a lot of people, I think, when you started off the conversation saying, can you define AI? Yeah. And no one raised their hands because, <laughs> like, you know. It's a scary it, question. It's a scary question. <laughs> I, I think there are going to be a lot of people with, with questions as they, as they, you know, continue on this journey. Um, how, if there is someone out there in our audience or, or wants to learn more or access the wealth of information that you bring to the table, how can they, how can they reach out to you? Thank you. I'm always I, I I love this and mm -hmm. I feel this is the best part of my job. So LinkedIn or my email, mm -hmm. my contact info. I in, intentionally yeah. share them. Very happy to do my best to help. I don't. I'm trying to catch up bus <laughs> runs. It's not like <laughs> it's not possible to know know all of this. But we are all going to help each other yeah. do the best of it. Last question I have to ask because I'm not an engineer. I'm a PR marketing guy. Amazing. <laughs> I, I, you know, I see mid journey. I see all these, I mean, 30 years from now, am I going to have a job or am I going to be one of the ones that actually is automated completely by AI? What do you, what do you think? Do you think, do you think that marketing side of the house is going to still have people or is it going to be AI? If, if you want to work, maybe you want to retire. <laughs> then well, maybe I hope I'll be on a beach somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but for the younger for the younger generation so coming in i do think i mean and this is my sincere belief mm -hmm. if we want to work like i want to work i want to first live until 150 mm -hmm. and i definitely want to work until yeah. my last day i want to work there will always be jobs meaningful mm -hmm. value add value creation opportunities for yeah. all of us mm -hmm. in whichever fields we are passionate about in your case yeah. i think that's marketing and pr yeah. there is huge creativity authentic mm -hmm. value that yeah. i'm sure your wisdom your experience your connection with the world around yeah. you uh, is not replicable yeah. and in fact i also think that just like you know organic food or something mm -hmm. The human created value yeah. at some point will be actually premium. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to be, I'm, I'm genuinely optimistic, yes, but yeah. I do believe these things that actually, as long as we rise up, mm -hmm. we make the most of the tools and not the other way around, yes. like we be made of most of yes. them by the yes. data and <laughs> by the tools. Um, I think uh, there will be fantastic. And we, we will only be more human. Yeah. Because we will get rid of all the repetitive, meaningless mm -hmm. things. And focus in on exactly. the actual thing exactly. that you need to do. The most fulfilling part. All right. So in other words, um, 
don't be afraid. <laughs> no. You know, you know, don't be afraid. This technology is, you're going to have more opportunity because of it. So, uh, Dinam, thank, thank you so you. much for joining us. I, I really appreciate your presentation this morning. I know our audience did. I look forward, hopefully, on having you back on the show. Thank you. Uh, this technology is, is, is fascinating, and we're, we, it might be cooking for 50 years, but now that it's out, <laughs> everybody's paying attention <laughs> to it. So... Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll make sure to continue the conversation. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Thank you. And again, this has been Engineering Influence, a podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies coming to our, from our 2024 fall conference in New Orleans, brought to you by Bentley, another company that's actually, actually including AI into their suite of services. So it all ties together. <laughs> we'll see you next time.